It seems like in the world of football, we have a battle between film and analytics. On one hand, you have the diehard film watchers that think analytics just simply isn't that valuable. On the other hand, you have the analytics hive mind that will tout stats above all else. As you know from watching this channel, I tend to sit in the middle between these views. I like to use advanced stats to supplement the film, but at times, it feels like one or the other doesn't tell the full story. Looking at Abraham Lucas, the Seahawks' new offensive tackle out of Washington State, this is where I feel the most. Just how important are advanced stats for offensive linemen? Before we begin this breakdown, if you can do me a huge favor and like and subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. So anyways, starting with Lucas' advanced stats, you can see that he did really well in allowed pressure rate last season. He only allowed a 1.9 pressure rate on his pass blocking attempts. This is better than the first round offensive linemen like Ika McQuano and Evan Neal. It's also better than Charles Cross, who the Seahawks took at ninth overall. The question I keep getting asked is why is there such a large disparity in his scouting grade versus these scores? Why would the advanced stats say that Lucas should have been picked much earlier, while some of my most trusted offensive line analysts believe he was actually picked too soon? For me, that answer comes down to scheme and technique. The thing about Abe Lucas is that he played in an air raid offense. This scheme uses very wide splits for the offensive line. These wide splits increase the distance a pass rusher must travel to create a pressure on the quarterback. It automatically gives the offensive lineman the advantage simply by alignment. Now, the same thing could actually be said for Charles Cross, who was in the same scheme. However, I give Cross an early first round grade. So why is there a difference? Well, beyond scheme, the main thing you need to know about Lucas is how his technique will translate to the NFL. Starting with the positives, Lucas is quick off the snap and he can close the gap quickly. His best traits are his quickness, size, and length. He's 6'6", has almost 34 inch arms, and his 40 yard dash and three cone times were at the top of the class. He ran a 4.9240 and his three cone time was incredible at a 7.25. Even his 20-yard dash was ridiculous at 4-4. Athletically speaking, Lucas is very gifted. He uses his raw ability on every given play. He has the awareness to pass off stunts, he is strong enough to hold up at the point of his hack in the running game, and he seems patient in terms of his hands and his mirroring ability. He also has a background in basketball, and that definitely helps him secure the angle whenever he has to pin the front side of his own run. The issue with Lucas, though, is that his pass blocking technique is very hit or miss. He gets way too high in his stance, his anchor and his hand usage whenever he takes on a bull rush always seems to be a bit late. Simply, how he breaks down his technique when he faces speed rushers around the edge, it leaves a lot to be desired. There were way too many plays where his balance threw his steps backwards and allowed him to get blown back into the pocket. Speed to power pass rushers will destroy him in the NFL. They'll also set him up for spinning club moves outside simply due to the late hands. Now, I hate to be negative, but this is very important to understand in terms of his overall ability. Take this example against Oregon. Brandon Dorless is lining up as the wide nine against Lucas on the right side of the offensive line. As you can see, Lucas broke down his technique early. He galloped to his spot, he didn't stay square to the line of scrimmage, and his base wasn't stout at all. He is way too upright in his stance. His center gravity is too high, and he gets pummeled backwards into the pocket. From Dorless's perspective, his three steps to gain depth was enough to get Lucas before he even reacted. He had both hands inside Lucas' chest plate very quickly on this one. The threat of the speed rusher on the edge was enough for Lucas to break down his technique. This is why he was blown backwards to the pocket. This is also why the quarterback had to step up, just be immediately sacked by Kayvon Thibodeau. Now, obviously, it wasn't all bad. He had a number of plays where he did a great job using his grip strength and size to slow down a potential rusher. What concerns me, though, is that there are a lot of really good pass rushers in the NFL. If I was a pass rusher and I had any semblance of a speed to power move, I would set that up using speed rushes around the edge, and then I would feast using that power. I would keep hitting him with it until Lucas adjusted. This really bothered me. Now, the Seahawks use a quick passing game with timing-based concepts, so this should help Lucas, but it'll clearly be a problem until he improves. Now, as a run blocker, I mentioned that Lucas is good on zone concepts. He's especially good on the front side. He's really good at using his quickness and length to position himself to steal defenders out of the way. I think he's also great in space to take good angles, and he does a good job of setting up for a screen down the field. He always seemed willing to help out in that regard. In terms of improvements, though, Lucas isn't the best at drive blocks. For a guy of his size and length, I felt like he was overpowered on the edge and was out leveraged a bit too much for my liking. In my opinion, he's as pure of a zone blocking offensive lineman as you get. Using him on power and gap plays just doesn't suit his abilities. I would much rather have him reach block as opposed to drive blocking a defender man on man. The good news is that this is exactly what the Seahawks are doing with the running game. They run a wide zone scheme similar to Sean McVay's and Kyle Shanahan's, and so Lucas is a great fit in that offense. Overall, I gave Lucas a third round grade. The Seahawks took him at 72, so this is right in line with where I have him. He fits the scheme in terms of using his agility and position blocking on zone runs. He does have a lot of work to do in terms of improving his pass blocking technique. Redeveloping his kick steps to stay balanced and have a low center of gravity will be key to his development. I think he has the physical gifts to eventually be a good offensive lineman. 
However, he does have a lot of work to do in order to get there. Well, that's all I have for you in this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions on what you want to see next, please let me know. Also, make sure you subscribe and like the channel. As always, if you want to support me directly via my Patreon account, use the link below, and you can follow me on Twitter at Samuel or Gold.